It is always a pleasure to return to Clinton and the place I spent my happiest years. I am always grateful to see the homestead and grounds so lovingly cared for. And I welcome my old friend, Mr. Abraham Lincoln and Colonel Thomas Snell. Two more talented men would be hard to find in this part of the country. Well, I'm pleased I share your pleasure in this visit to Clinton and the marking of Founders Day. My, I can, it just seems like yesterday when we were together once before and uh, sharing with our, and working on our mutual endeavors. Well, I am pleased to accept your welcome, Mr. Moore, as I was coming here from center of town to aptly named Mr. Lincoln Square. <laughs> it brought back so many memories. What pleasant memories I brought you. Among my fathers. Well, like yourself, Mr. Moore, uh, I came to Clinton by way of Pekin with uh, more ambition than prospects for success. Wichita was my business in the beginning, but that changed around 1852 when something called the railroad caught my attention. Uh, what promise it held for our state and for the whole nation. As a lawyer, I devoted a good deal of time to railroad matters. I said you must be more and you personality. No, perhaps it's best if we do not revisit that bit of history and the strife that existed between us and the all. Yeah, to see them. There were disagreements. <laughs> Some people called it the railroad war. <laughs> that seems an overstatement. Wouldn't you agree, Mr. Lincoln? Well, my recollection is you two went down pretty fast for a time. <laughs> well, to put it succinctly, I favored a multi line rail across the great expanse of Illinois. This put me at odds my esteemed colleague. But we must remember the role that the railroad played in the growth of every town as far as the eye can see. How to pay for such expansion. That was the issue. Gentlemen, gentlemen, set aside all those dusty complaints. We're here to share an afternoon with our dear friends, and they have worked hard to maintain this town we so dearly love. Well, I do remember those first years were a struggle at times, but one of my favorite things to do is to read my obituary. <laughs> <laughs> now, I know that may sound odd, but if you want to know what people really think about you, wait until you're dead and read their commentary. <laughs> well, there's somebody who's been memorialized and scrutinized and eulogized to this very day. I, I guess I would agree with those sentiments. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, tell us, Colonel Snell, what stands out to you in the final remarks made after your passing? Well, it, it was noted that Colonel Snell, the last of three men to arrive in Clinton without money or influence, who became millionaires, had passed. Uh, to quote the Clinton Register, it said, Colonel Snell, who arrived in Clinton over 60 years ago without any capital, but plenty of brains and willing hands, had passed away. Well, the same testament was said of you and Dr. John Warner. <laughs> yeah, I thought you would enjoy hearing about that. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's a testament to how we built our business and personal fortunes. Ooh. I'll tell you, brains and capital, some, uh, brains and willing hands are sometimes the best capital a man can have. Mm -hmm. There's been a lot written about my early days as a lawyer, traveling the judicial circuit on horseback. But... The friends that stood by me when I left Illinois for Washington to become president will never be forgotten. And I will not forget your friendship to me, 
Why, if it hadn't been for your intervention, I might have spent a long and uncomfortable time in jail. Uh, may I suggest, <laughs> may I suggest that your hard-headed demeanor while serving with the 107th Regiment could have been a major contributor to that discomfort? I mean, ordering your troops to sing John Brown's body and burn fences in clear hearing distance of civilians of Louisville could hardly be called advisable. <laughs> John Brown's body's in the morning, but his soul is going on. Now, some conflicts and some songs are better just ignored. <laughs> <laughs> With the help of two other, two other lawyer friends, we were <coughs> able to convince the Army that Court martial was not necessary. Of course, I hadn't heard him sing. But. <laughs> well, have I thanked you lately for that presidential part? No, <laughs> but you're most welcome. <laughs> this was a county that always stood up when more willing hands were needed, whether asked to sacrifice their lives for the war effort or to purchase bonds to support the railroad. The people of Clinton and DeWitt County answered the call. And may I say that that investment has paid off handsomely. So many businesses. Yes. Are you aware that that bank you started in 1872 is still in business? I am indeed. Although I did take notice that it has moved, I suppose that's what you call progress, the need for a financial institution was a vision that John Warner and I had. I guess we both got that right. Cha-ching! <laughs> <laughs> and did you notice that large building with a sign for the vault? The, the first banks offered small vaults for people to place their valuables. Hmm? Who could predict that such a massive vault would be required? Yes. That speaks well of your community. <laughs> I am told that the vault is a gathering place for young people. Yes. <laughs> oh. ah, well, that you would support such an enterprise speaks equally well of your community. Mm. Another example of willing hands, right? <laughs> Indeed. Indeed. Well, I've always said, if you care for the young, they will tend to the future. Mm. Well, I suppose it's still difficult to keep the doors open for some in the mercantile business today. But uh, I think I speak for many of my contemporaries when I say that diversity is man's best friend when it comes to business endeavors. Uh, a lesson we learned as young men, the prosperity put forward <coughs> by the railroad gave us that diversity. Well, I'll tell you, the railroad certainly enabled me to expand my legal practice and some of my personal abilities as well, but um, I've often wondered what my life would have been like if, had I decided to remain in Illinois oh, as a duty. Our divided nation might not have withstood the bloody savagery of the Civil War without your leadership. To say that you gave your life for the United <coughs> States is the smallest of acknowledgments of what you did for all of us. He is right. A and the railroad went on to grow and prosper far beyond our lifetimes. <laughs> I am proud of the 800 miles of Illinois Central Railroad that was built during my working years and the hundreds of miles that followed. Well, you know, your keen insight uh, into such matters was duly noted in that uh, memorial that you uh, acknowledged just a few moments ago. I think what they what it said was this man studied studied less in in making up a railroad contract than most of us do in trading horses. <laughs> Mr. Moore, you are indeed lucky to have your home so lovingly maintained. I would give anything if I could visit my old family home, which is actually just a, a few 
a short ride from where we are sitting in this very spot. Well, I must say, you're a 25 room home, tastefully appointed at the cost of what was it? $50,000. Now that's quite a personal accomplishment. Well, not to boast, but the description of palatial dwelling would still be accurate today. <laughs> oh, we were happy there, my bride Sarah and I, with our three sons. Uh, of course, times were not always peaceful, but Sarah stood by me. Uh, to, to quote uh, my obituary again, uh, Colonel Snell was an independent man who was not swayed by any particular party. And I still believe that that stance was a better, made me a better man for it. Well, I will say, public perception, it's a mixed bag. They knew me as, and advertised me as a prairie lawyer. A man not possessed of good looks, certainly not a handsome wardrobe, but I don't have any argument with that description. <laughs> no man has more wise words attributed to him than Mr. Abraham Lincoln. Well, your speech here in Clinton is but one example of those memorable words. Well, I still believe that you can't fool all the people all the time. <laughs> but I must say, my, my sense that what is shared over the, what do they call it, the public airways, it does give me some pause. All I can say is I'm glad that in my day they didn't have what is known as reality TV. <laughs> or court TV. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I am proud of what we accomplished here in this prairie city. Uh, this stretch of land, making it prosperous place for generations to, to live and, and, and raise their families. Now, Colonel Snell and I credit old log schoolhouses for our education, but truthfully, all of us benefited from what we learned along the way in life. Studying, studying law, business, uh, real estate. There is no substitute for experience. Oh, and, and speaking of experience, I want to congratulate the members of the Homestead and Museum Committee for more than 50 years of the greatest <coughs> party in the history of DeWitt County, the Apple and Pork Festival. A genius concept for any generation. To think that more than 100,000 people come to Clinton, many of them gathered here on the grounds of my home for apple cider floats and ham and beans. If I'm not mistaken, that's more than Stephen Douglas boasted in all of his political campaigns combined. <laughs> <laughs> well, perhaps he should have asked the Waynesville ladies to provide some of their popular gingerbread cookies. <laughs> Douglas didn't need cookies. <laughs> Some more. You didn't tell us we were going to have guests. We would have prepared refreshments. Oh, there's nothing to be concerned about. The, the DeWitt County Daughters of the American Revolution and Celebrate Clinton have provided cake and lemonade for everyone. Well, that would be a relief for Mrs. <laughs> it has been my pleasure having all of you here with my friends, Mr. Abraham Lincoln and Colonel Thomas Snell. I hope you will linger with us a while longer on this summer afternoon. Till next time, we bid you good day. We want to thank our three very talented actors who have returned with us for a second year. We have Mr. Fritz Klein, who is a wonderful Abe Lincoln. We have our Weinberger as Mr. C.H. Moore, and of course John Bowling as Thomas Mill, and Henry and Allison Money are Mr. Moore's service. <laughs>